Hey guys, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. It's Coach Simpson. Uh, this week we're going to be walking through practice organization. So I'm going to be pretty specific to the gun T, uh, but hopefully you can take some of these principles and you know apply them to if you run spread or you run double wing or whatever you might run on offense. Some of this stuff may apply over and even to defensive guys, it may apply over to them. But if you'd like more information specifically on what I am doing, you can reach out to me and I'll, and I'll help help you. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter, FB Coach Simpson. You can find me obviously on this YouTube station where I'm putting stuff out, or you can uh, email me, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. You can also subscribe to this channel. I'll be putting out stuff this week. It's all going to be on practice organization. And I'm going to do it uh, kind of from the aspect of, of the gun T. Uh, but I'm, again, I hope that you can take this and, and apply it to whatever offense you might be running. But it's coming from uh, my offensive system. So today, we're going to talk about individual drills. So as you organize your practice, uh, most coaches know this. And so I'm not going to bore you with it. But some of you guys might be younger that are watching or just learning how to, how to do this. The way you want to organize your practice is start small and end big. It's kind of how most coaches do it. It's how I was taught. It's how we've tried to kind of apply that. Uh, so you want to start with individual work. That's what we'll talk about here today. Uh, then you're going to move to what I call pod work, which is very unique to what we do. Uh, a lot of coaches are kind of moving to this, and that's basically where you're taking maybe two positions that don't normally work together and putting them together. And I'll go through that again on tomorrow's uh, episode. The next thing you'll do is you'll go to like an inside period where you're now you're going to bring all the guys together and work on run game. It could be a blitz pickup period. It could be even a screen period, but you're working with all of your linemen and a lot of your running back, wing back type guys, quarterback. The next period will be seven on seven, which is a, a pretty popular thing now. That's where your skill guys go work on the passing game. And then finally, you usually want to end your sessions of uh, practice with some type of team. So team, period, uh, those are the different things you're going to go through in a practice, a general practice. Today, we're going to focus on individual. Okay, so individual, what I want to really focus on is a lot of times as coaches, especially younger coaches maybe getting into it, you know, we may only know a certain amount of drills that we found on YouTube or found from another coach. And so we do those drills and they maybe don't really apply to our guy. And so really want to challenge you as a coach to treat individual time as precious you know, nothing upsets me more as a head coach than to look over and see an individual coach say, well, you know, we're done early. Well, if you're done early, you know, then we need to be rehashing these things. We're maybe not teaching them. You should feel as an individual coach that you never have enough time because that time should be the time where you're able to coach all of your kids, okay, in a time where they're going to get better at their skills. So we really want to prioritize an individual that we are coaching every kid. That's a lot of the only time those Ninth graders or sophomores may get, or your backups, your threes, okay, your twos, that's where they're going to get better. Because when you move to this other stuff, they may have to work over on scout team. They don't really get to hone their craft. So this time should be very valuable to you. As an example, I'm going to take our wing back and kind of the skills that we ask him to do. I would recommend you do this for every position, okay, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, and then not just categorize the linemen as one group, because you may have plays where certain linemen need certain skills. Uh, in our offense, you know, a lot of times our strong tackle skill set might be way different than like our quick guard skill set. So I'm going to take our wing back and kind of break down how I look at him, and then that's how I decide what he needs an individual. So we look at the skills this position needs. For us in our offense, you know, our wing back, this guy right here has got to be able to do a lot of things. He's kind of our movable piece. He's what really makes our offense go. And without this guy uh, being able to do multiple things, you're kind of limited personnel package-wise. So here's what he needs to be good at. First of all, he's going to be able to block. And he has several blocks. So he's going to be able to down block. He's going to be able to block in space Okay, on screens. A lot of times we'll put him out there in trips or we'll put him out there at receiver. He's going to be able to block in space. He's going to be able to block down on a defensive lineman. He's going to be able to block second level players. So blocking for him, there's three different types of blocking right there. So for him, when we do our individual period, we want to make sure we're doing blocking periods where we're hitting the three different types of blocks. So tomorrow I'm going to get into pod work. He may go to a different position group to do this, uh, but he needs to work those three types of blocks. 
And we think in our offense, that's probably the first skill he's got to have. Second skill is types of ball drills, okay? This guy's going to carry the ball for us. This guy's going to catch the ball for us. This guy's going to, uh, we run double handoff with this guy. So he's got to have really good ball skills, okay? So we're going to work on ball security. We're going to work on understanding how to run the ball to protect the football as you're running it. Okay, that's the next skill. Then in our offense, depending on the player, you know, this year I was blessed with one that could really catch it. You know, some years that's not the case, but he has to be able to catch the ball. You know, we have a lot of different things we do with this guy to get him the ball. He's got to be able to catch it and, and multiple routes. So inside of catching it, you know, you have to work on one, just catching the ball. Then you need to work on the routes he's going to run. So there's times when we may have our, our other two receivers over there working routes. He's not really going to hit much uh, when he's over here working these skills. And then he'll go over there. When he's over there, we don't want to waste time with him. We want to run the routes he's going to run in the game. And you know, because you're short on time, because we've just mentioned now three skills. We're about to get to the fourth one where an individual, you're going to run out of time pretty quickly. Then, obviously, he has to know his plays. You know, he's got to know, hey, on this play, I do this thing. And in our offense, this guy has to know how to motion, carry out fakes. And then there's obviously plays we get him the ball. He needs to be working you know, how that's going to look. And so he's got just four skills. I mean, you could list more, but inside of each of these are other skills that come off of that. So if you're doing your wing back, and in our offense, he's kind of that multiple guy, you need to really think long and hard about what kind of individual you're giving this kid. And then you need to evaluate that. You know, as you're working individual skills during the season, you're very limited now. Uh, you need to really hone in on what do we struggle with you know, what are we asking this kid to do that he's struggling to do? Either we need to give him more time and individual, we need to find another player there, or we need to adjust our scheme. Uh, but it's important in individual that you look at position by position what skills they need so you're not just running drills for drill's sake. You know, that's the one thing that I've seen a lot as a coach at a lot of different places is they're running drills or putting drills out, even on social media. That those are great drills for that school but they may not match your school. So make sure as you're working through and even watching this YouTube station, you take what applies for your positions and you build your drills off of what you're asking them to do. So a lot of times as coaches, we want to be creative and come up with great things and that's awesome. But make sure that it's going to apply and then you need to prioritize the time you're going to spend on is that going to actually show up on a Friday night. Appreciate you checking this out. The rest of this week, I'm going through more practice organization. Tomorrow, I'll be handling pods, which is something we're a little unique with. I think a lot of coaches have reached out to me on that. Uh, we'll go through inside drill seven on seven and then team the rest of these days. If you are interested in more information from me specifically, feel free to reach out to me, uh, FB Coach Simpson. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, one of the Facebook groups you can go to, or you can go to my website and get more detailed information about our specific uh, offense. Thank you for your time.